Hey, hi, and howdy, sweet friends. Welcome back to my channel, and welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are new, my name is Courtney, and I do a lot of food and kitchen home-related content. I'm a stay-at-home homeschooling mom. We are a family of five. My oldest is in college, and then I have two younger boys, and they are in the fourth grade. Uh, we currently stay busy with their activities and co-op and homeschool, and of course, I like to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. So every Thursday I share these videos and they're kind of like meal preps or just hanging out with me in the kitchen. This week, everybody is sick at my house. We all got, I don't know if we're allowed to say it on YouTube yet, but we all got COVID. So we're hanging out at home. I'm making a couple of soups and I decided to get in here and go ahead and make some dog food first because my dogs still got to eat. They're not sick and they are hungry. I've got a bag of leg quarters that I bought at Walmart. They're like $5.42. I just popped them in my pressure cooker with about six cups of water. We're gonna end up with fall off the bone chicken and some amazing chicken broth that we're gonna use to make two different soups. If you're interested in the soups, make sure you subscribe and stick around, hit the notification bell. Those will be in my what's for dinner video that comes out Saturday. So while my chicken's doing its thing, I've got this big pack of mushrooms I got from Sam's, just the cheap white mushrooms. I'm slicing them and then cutting those slices in half and placing them on my food dehydr tra dehydrator trays. I've dehydrated mushrooms before and then pulverized them in my food processor to make this delicious like umami bomb seasoning. It's mushroom salt. Once you turn them into powder, you add salt. So delicious on everything. But today we're gonna try something new. I wanna make a lot of homemade cream of mushroom soup instead of buying the store-bought stuff. And I decided that if I dehydrate these, I can have them on demand in my pantry year round and they're quick and easy. So I did that giant tray in the Fuji hydrator and um, let him go for about 12 hours. And they're gonna hang out in my pantry until it's time to rehydrate some for some homemade cream and mushroom soup. While they are doing their time in the dehydrator, my chicken's still going in the pressure cooker. I did it for about 25 to 30 minutes on high pressure and then I let it do a natural release. We're gonna get started on some breakfast. So I've got some eggs right here and I've got some ham. I pulled a ham out of my freezer, a very small carver ham, and I am using some of it for one of the soups I'm making and the rest I'm gonna use here to chop up and make some breakfast sandwiches. So I'm gonna start off by making the eggs. This is like the easiest egg hack ever. I've got a whole bunch of eggs. I season them, season them however you want. You can add any seasoning that you want in there. I just use salt and pepper. Then I add in a little milk or half and half, whatever I have on hand. Typically it's half and half. And I give them a really, really, really good whisk. And um, you really, really wanna make sure that those are pretty broken up. The yolks are broken up and everything. And then the trick is to bake these in the oven. So I've got a parchment lined cookie sheet and I sprayed it with cooking spray. We're just gonna pour our egg liquid right into that uh, pan right there. And then we're just gonna bake it in the oven. I do it at 350 and it depends on how many eggs you're cooking as to how long, but it's generally pretty quick. At 350, these were done in about 10 to 12 minutes. If you have a thicker layer, it's gonna take a little bit longer. But now I've got this perfect rectangle of eggs. I can just cut these up into perfect cubes and put them into any kind of breakfast sandwich that I want. It makes it very, very simple. So I've got some English muffins. I bought these at Sam's Club, so I've got a ton of them. And then I laid some plastic wrap down on my counter. I'm gonna cut each English muffin in half. I'm gonna put some of my ham that I just sliced up on there. And then I'm gonna put some egg on there and that's it. You can add cheese, you can add any meat you want. I just happen to have this in my deep freeze and I needed to go ahead and meal prep some breakfast. Um, people still need to eat while we're sick. So I was trying to get things handled and done, but I was gonna pop these in my freezer and let them hang out and we just eat on them throughout the week. So there's that chicken. You can see it's a ton of broth. This made an entire gallon. And so that was perfect for all the soups that I made throughout the week. I'm letting that chicken cool and I'm gonna go ahead and make some confit garlic. If you are a longtime viewer of my channel, you know I swear by this stuff. It is my absolute favorite kitchen condiment. I have made a video about it before. I'm completely out though. So we've got to make some more. I've got one of those bags of um, peeled garlic. You can peel your own. Doesn't matter. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. This is easier. So this is what I do. It costs about 10 bucks to buy the bag of garlic at Sam's Club and it costs about 10 bucks for that bottle of avocado oil there. You can use olive oil if you want. I did that the first time I made this, but the cost of olive oil has really, really gone up. Avocado oil is much cheaper at this point. So I've got that bottle of avocado oil. Um, I didn't think to get the little stopper thing out, the pour stopper out. So it took me a little while to get that whole bottle in the pot. But once I did, I stirred it around and made sure the garlic is fully submerged in the oil. 
And I cook this on my smallest burner on the lowest setting because I do have a gas stove and it tends to get a little bit hotter. And I just let it go. It probably took about 45 minutes on low to get the garlic to the perfect place. You just wanna watch it. It'll turn um, a light golden color. It'll get soft. And then you know it's done and just let it cool and you can put it into your different containers. This gives you two products. It's garlic oil, which I love to cook with, and the confit garlic, which is amazing. It tastes just like roasted garlic. So I pulled the chicken out and I strained our broth. That gave, gave us, like I said, a gallon of broth to work with to make soups and stuff throughout the week. And this is the good stuff because there's bones in there, so it's got all kinds of stuff in it. It's really, really fantastic broth. Typically I will use it for the dog food and I will use it to cook rice, but because I knew I was making soups this week, I decided that we needed it more than the dogs did and they could cook it, I could cook their rice in water. They didn't seem to mind one bit either. So here I am just shredding up this chicken. Uh, it's really a pretty quick process. I mostly make sure that I get all the bones out. You really don't want your dogs to have any kind of poultry bones. They tend to splinter and that can be super, super dangerous for dogs. So if you are doing this at home, be very, very careful to make sure you remove all of the poultry bones from the chicken. That is one of the reasons that I really like the rotisserie chicken. It's just easier to make sure you get all the bones out. But this gives me a lot more chicken than a rotisserie chicken would. A rotisserie chicken makes one week worth of food for my dogs. This makes two. So there is a big difference. The, the cost is the same, but the amount that you get is just so much more. So I also like to leave all of the skin in here, but you may not want to do that. I have two long-haired dogs. One of them is a husky. They have a very, very high tendency to get very dry hair and dry skin and very itchy. I also have a mini Aussie who tends to get very dry skin and very itchy. So I do leave a lot of the skin in here because it has some fat in it and some oils that really, really help to kind of moisturize dog skin. So that is just personal preference for me in my household, but you may need to do something different if you have like a chihuahua or something to lip to you. Talk to your vet if you're curious about it. So now that I've gotten all the chicken off the bone and it's pretty much shredded, I really carefully run my hands through there to make sure that there are no more little bones in there anywhere. Yes, I'm struggling with these gloves, um, but I'm getting better at using them. I'm not sure what the trick is, but I'm trying to figure it out and I've kind of got them to stay on a little bit better. So now I'm gonna go ahead and split this in half because like I said, this is two weeks worth of food. So I will put half of it in the freezer and the other half will um, just be in the fridge for them to eat. I give this to my dogs. I give them a really good portion size of it. Every single morning when we get up, it is their breakfast. And then for dinner, I typically just give them some dry food. My husky is pretty particular. He likes the mini bites. Yeah, he's a big dog. He's a very big dog, but he only likes the mini bite food. He's just crazy and he's funny. But they know it's theirs. That's why you can see some paws and noses down there on the floor. They know the smell, they know what the chicken's for, and they are fully aware that I'm making their food. So while this was doing its thing, I had been cooking some rice on the stove. I don't do anything special to it, just rice and water, nothing else. And like I said, sometimes I use a chicken broth, which is, you know, extra healthy, a little bit more fortified and all the good things that come from your chicken, but water's fine too. So I'm splitting the rice in half, half in the container for this week, and of course half in the bag for the freezer. I will definitely have to leave this on the counter to cool for a little while. As you can see, that rice is piping hot. Um, this was very fresh dog food for sure. I just go ahead and mix all of this in together. Sometimes I throw in fruits or veggies. If you're curious what you can use, make sure that you are you know, searching online for foods that are safe for dogs or you need to talk to your vet, whatever you feel more comfortable with. I kind of stick to apples, peas, green beans, and carrots. Uh, never put any onions in there and never put any garlic in there. That's not good for your dogs. I try to avoid salt and pepper, but occasionally I've got a little bit of leftover something or other that has a little salt and pepper in it that I will give them here and there. Like I had a little bit of extra egg and you saw I put salt and pepper in that. I did let them have a little bit of egg. Egg is pretty good for dogs. So that's all there is to the dog food and I don't keep it for more than seven days in the fridge. I feel like that is long enough. So if you're gonna have it longer than that, make sure that you keep it in the freezer. There's those mushrooms, just checking in on them. They are totally done. I just stored them in a mason jar. I let them cool overnight inside the food processor. I just left them in there overnight so that they would be completely cooled down before I put them in the jar just to prevent any kind of condensation. And then the last thing we're gonna work on today is some homemade bread. Like I said, we are all sick and I made a couple soups this week, so I really wanted some homemade bread. This is different from last week's um, 
In last week's recipe, I shared the Amish white bread, which is a favorite of ours. It's like loaf bread, and sometimes I make rolls. This is just an easy, no-knead, crusty bread, but I do need it a little bit. I always need it, and I think it turns out better for that. So in my food processor, I mix some very warm water, like warm to the touch, but not hot. Don't go above 110 degrees. It'll kill your yeast. And then the recipe that I'm linking below does not call for any kind of sugar, but I always put some sort of sugar in to feed my yeast. And my personal preference is honey. So I added a little bit in there and just mixed it with the warm water, added my yeast in there, and I just kind of made sure that that was mixed up in the water and let it do its thing for about 10 minutes so that it gets nice and foamy. You know, it just eats the sugar in the water, feeds the yeast, and it starts to de develop the gases and stuff and get all bubbly, and that's exactly what you want. So after 10 minutes, it looks like that. I went ahead and added my salt, and there is my flour. And then I just let this mix in my food processor for about eight minutes with my dough hook. Um, it looks dry in the beginning. I will definitely say it looks very dry, but trust the process and let it keep kneading because as it mixes, it rehydrates that flour more and more, and eventually you get this beautiful soft luscious dough ball that looks like that that's exactly what you want you just want to cover that um i just spray some nonstick spray on my plastic wrap and i set it off in a corner where it's going to be kind of warm i like to set it on the counter next to my micro or my refrigerator because i know there's a little bit of warmth coming off of that i let this sit and do it saying for about two or three hours and then i pulled out my dutch oven and put it in a 450 degree oven for 30 minutes so it gets piping piping hot once that 30 minutes was up, I pulled out a sheet of parchment paper and floured it and threw my dough on there. As you can see, I'm just making sure it's covered in flour. We're not shaping this or doing anything fancy. I just took a sharp knife and I cut some lines in it because this will expand as it cooks. Uh, you can put whatever pattern on there you want. You can just put some straight lines down the middle. It doesn't matter. There's my piping hot Dutch oven. We're just going to place parchment paper and all straight in there, put the lid on, and bake this. Um, my, I do mine a little differently than the recipe, I think. I like to bake mine for 20 minutes with the lid on and then 10 minutes with the lid off. It doesn't get super brown, but I don't like for my crust to get too hard either. So once it is done, it looks like this, and it's completely cooked all the way through. This was beautiful bread. I always like to brush melted butter on top of it and then add a little bit of salt because I think it tastes fantastic. It just gives the bread this beautiful flavor, and I love it. You don't have to do that if you want the crust to be like really hard and crusty don't do this because the butter will soften the crust. Personally, I don't like it to be super hard and crusty, so I love brushing the butter on. That's a tablespoon of butter there. And this filled my Dutch oven, so it's a pretty big loaf of bread. I just kind of brush it all on and just pour the last little bits over the top and just sprinkle regular table salt on there, nothing fancy. And I will link this recipe down below. I've been using this one for a little bit over a year now, and I love it. Like I said, the only thing I do differently is I add the honey. But that is all I accomplished this week. Um, if you're interested in the soups, they will be on my Saturday video, my what's for dinner video. I wanted to do three, but I think there's probably only going to be two in there because we are just kind of feeling exhausted at this point. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. I look forward to seeing you guys again. Make sure you stick around, hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for joining me. I will see you soon. Have a great one, guys. Bye.